Hi, I'm Monica Mowry, and I just finished my PhD at the Univers University of Toronto in ecology and evolutionary biology things. Um, so I did my PhD, it was five years studying invasive black widow spiders. Um, so I went all around the world looking at how spiders invade new places and how they adapt to these new environments. So today I'll be telling you a little bit about um, how about spiders in general, why they're interesting, why would you study something that's kind of scary, a lot of people are scared of spiders, and uh, how, they can, how we can use them as a model for ecology and evolution. So spiders are really cool. Look at, these are some examples of a range of uh, spiders. This is an ogre-faced spider on the lower left. They use a net to capture prey. And on the top right is the cellar spider. You may have seen it in, maybe in your, in your basement or in little dark corners. There's, in the middle is uh, the widow spider. That's uh, the genus that I study. So you can see there's a huge range, tarantulas, a range of sizes, shapes, and colors in spiders. Um, there are over 45,000 species of spiders around the world. And they live in all different habitats. And there may even be up to 100,000 species of spiders, but scientists haven't discovered them yet. And actually, when I was researching the, the, uh, how many species there were, the, uh, just this month, a new spider was discovered in India. It's a trapdoor spider, a type of tarantula. So that's really cool. So every, every few weeks, a new spider is discovered. Um, they're the most common predators on land, so terrestrial predators, and they eat 400 to 800 million tons of prey per year. So you may be afraid of spiders, but if you don't like mosquitoes, flies, those kind of things, then you, know, you can thank spiders for eating all of these nasty, uh, like annoying insects. <laughs> They're also of interest to human health. Uh, you may know spiders are venomous but most of them aren't really aggressive and they're not likely to, they don't really want to attack humans. Their main prey is uh, other insects or spiders. And they have really cool behaviors. So I'll talk about a few of the behaviors uh, in this talk. So how do spiders move around? You may know spiders, a lot of spiders have webs, so they build their own way to catch prey. Uh, they can move on the ground. Some spiders are ambush predators and they uh, attack prey. They, uh, can, some spiders can swim. You may have seen dock spiders that can walk on water and even attack fish or aquatic insects. Um, some spiders can move in the air through ballooning. Ballooning is when spiders release silk from their abdomen and then they can be carried with the wind to new places. And uh, spiders can also move to new habitats either by themselves or with humans' help through uh, transporting them with produce or cars or shipments. And th so that's what I studied in my uh, PhD. So spiders have all kinds of different webs. There's, you may have seen orb webs, or the really pretty flat webs that have really nice geometric shapes. There are also things like mesh webs, funnel webs, sheet webs, and cobwebs. And the, different, the shape of the web uh, depend, or is determined by what kind of prey the spider is interested in catching. So orb webs are used to catch flying insects, whereas Cobwebs are more likely to catch ants or beetles. Uh, some spiders that, that, aren't, uh, that don't have webs are, are active predators, so they attack prey just uh, on land or on whatever substrate they're on, on a plant. And uh, here's a video of a swimming spider. So this is, it's a spider catching a fish, actually. So you'll see the, <laughs> this is the dock, yeah, the dock spider with these hairs, uh, a fish underneath and then it can sense the vibrations on the water and attack the prey. <laughs> you can see the, there's the vibration <laughs> and then attacks the fish. <laughs> so that's some, one other method of prey capture in spiders. Uh, there's also spider dispersal where spiders use the wind, to, wind currents to uh, get to new habitats. So this is often at the baby spider stage. So little baby spiders, uh, once they hatch from their egg sac, they uh, release silk, and then some studies have found spiders even hundreds of kilometers from land. So they've used satellites, and they've collected them. It was off the coast of Australia, so they were, they're really getting uh, far with wind currents. And here's an example of a crab spider ballooning. So this is the spider uh, t making <laughs> the tiptoe behavior, and then testing the wind. The spiders hit it. But when the breeze was warm and gentle, less than three meters per second, the 
The spider spun out a triangular sail. So you'll see the recent releasing spread. silk. Spiraling and then, updrafts lifted the sails. And then the spider thrown is away. <laughs> so different species of spiders can do this. Crab spiders as adults and also the, the widow spiders that I study in the lab as uh, juveniles. So spiders, through ballooning, you can see on the lower left is just a spider walking around. And they're not very mobile. They can maybe go a few hundred meters. But through ballooning that I outlined in, in blue, the blue square, uh, they can go hundreds or even thousands of kilometers. So this really increases the connectivity among populations of spiders. So even apart from ballooning, there's also this, as I mentioned, human-mediated transport. So here's a map of shipping routes of uh, goods throughout a whole year. So humans are really moving plants and animals around to places where they weren't before. And uh, in addition to these invasive species, this can interact with climate change, uh, expanding the range of invasive species. Even in Ontario, so there's even just this month, there's an invasive wild pig problem in Ontario, as well as this uh, grass, invasive grass that's spreading all over the place in Ontario. So we really need to find out what is, how these invasive species invade and how they adapt to new habitats. So that's what I looked at in my thesis, so using widow spiders as a model. And uh, sp invasive species have been spread around the world uh, from, you may have heard of lionfish, they're invasive species that uh, are, they're, they're actually venomous too, and uh, they're really, they've spread like crazy around the Bahamas and Florida. There's uh, the cane toad, uh, which is, from Asia and it's invaded Australia and has spread really rapidly. And the uh, European, the uh, ash, emerald ash borer, which has caused millions of dollars of damage in Canada. So invasive species have these immense ecological impacts. Um, so there can be selection actually as the uh, species spreads to a new place that results in the invasive population that's different from the native population. So I was looking at this in, spi in widow spiders, as I mentioned, that they're like the black widow that is venomous and there's uh, cannibalism. So there's two highly invasive species, the Australian redback and, you'll see, and the brown widow spider. And I have live uh, spiders, which you'll see at the end of the talk and you can see them up close. So spiders uh, are really good at invading. The female has to only mate once and then she can make egg sacs for the rest of her lifespan, which could be a few years. And inside each egg sac, there's hundreds of eggs, 100 to 300 usually. And these egg sacs are produced every few weeks. And then the spiderlings hatch, where they eat each other. Uh, they eat their siblings for food. And then uh, males are nomadic, and females are more sedentary. And you'll see there's a huge size difference. Fem males are about a 20th the size of females. They're really tiny. So in my uh, work, I was studying the Australian redback spiders. They're native to Australia, and they invaded New Zealand and Japan. And then the, uh, in the US, there's a brown widow invasion where they started out in Florida, and then they've spread uh, westward to California. And I also looked at Israel and Palestine where they were introduced in Tel Aviv in 1983, and then they've spread south. So I was looking at all these different invasive species to compare what are, the, what are the patterns in invasion? And uh, we, my lab has the largest population of black widow spiders in the world, of 50,000 spiders in our first floor uh, biology building. So we can test all kinds of cool behaviors in the lab that we can't test in the field. Uh, we can test veracity, so how hungry a spider is and how fast they attack prey. We can test uh, boldness, so how they respond to a predator threat mating behavior, they have this cool uh, cannibalism where the male somersaults into the female's mouth during mating. And as I mentioned, sibling cannibalism where the siblings eat each other when they're babies. And um, I mentioned ballooning earlier. We can measure this cool ballooning and repelling behavior in the lab. So I made uh, this dispersal arena, just a big box that I put a baby spider in, and then I blew air at it for uh, 10 minutes and then I could see it actually balloon in the lab and measure how this was related to invasion success. So just to summarize my, uh, my research, I found that invasive spiders were larger and faster to balloon, so they did this ballooning behavior more and they were more likely to do it. And they were also more cannibalistic, so there were these behavioral differences in the invasive populations. 
And uh, just to tie this in, I thought this was a cool study using citizen science. It's where uh, the general public collects data, collects data, so observations of different animals, and they use this in their studies. So this was studying a uh, Canadian spider. It's the northern widow spider, Latrodectus variolis. And they use data from citizen scientists, from museums, and from the literature. And they uh, use this range of dates from the, ninth, um, from the 60s until today. And they found that the range of this spider is expanding northward with climate change. So it's a cool example of this uh, science, scientist from McGill that used data from all uh, sorts of places to, to, uh, study invasive, to study range expansion as well as climate change. And uh, I just wanted to point out there's uh, iNaturalist is a, is a good website, so you can report, if you, even around Toronto or Mississauga, you can report uh, whatever animals you see. And there's even an app called Seek that you can take pictures with your phone and then it, uh, you can find different animals, including spiders, plants, insects, anything. Yeah. So I hope you, I convince you that spiders aren't just scary, there are also a lot of good reasons to study them. They're, uh, they have a lot of ecological impacts. They eat millions of tons of insects. Um, and they have a lot of cool behaviors like ballooning and swimming. So, and I'll, have, uh, I'll bring up the live Australian and the uh, brown widow spider for you to look at uh, things. Any questions?